Hi there. So, uh, so in the previous videos, uh, we introduced the complex exponential. Um, and, and basically, it was uh, introduced as a generalization of the real exponential, uh, whereby we wanted to retain some of the properties of the real exponential and therefore define the complex exponential. Uh, in the process, we also came up with the Euler's identity. Um, and so let's just uh, try and use the Euler's identity to represent a couple of numbers on the complex field to see how it works and also discuss a couple of more ideas. Um, so, uh, so we call the Euler's identity is e to the power i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So let's say we are on the complex plane <coughs> where uh, this is the real axis. Let's label points along this as x and this is the imaginary axis and li let's label points along this as y. Um, so let's say we want to represent the point 1 comma 0 using the polar representation. Um, now recall the polar representation of a complex number z is of the form r e to the power i theta where r is the magnitude of z and theta is its argument or the angle that it makes with, res with respect to the x-axis. Uh, so in this case, the magnitude of the complex number will be 1, uh, whereas the angle that it makes with the x-axis is just 0. So the number or the complex number 1 can simply be represented as something with magnitude 1 times e to the power of i 0. Right? Um, let's also try how do we represent the point i, uh, which is one unit along the imaginary axis. Now i, again, it has magnitude r equals 1 because it's one unit along the imaginary axis, so r is 1, but the angle that it makes in the counterclockwise direction with respect to the x-axis is pi over 2. And so this is e to the power i pi over 2. Um, now this is consistent with Euler's identity and the way we can check that is um, e to the power of i pi over 2, if you work that out, e to the power i pi over 2 is cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2 and cosine pi over 2 is 0 and sine pi over 2 is 1 so this is just i and this is what we have written here that i is 1 unit e to the power i pi over 2. Um, so let's try another example let's say the point 1 plus i. So again we need to find out its magnitude the magnitude of this vector and the argument theta. Um, now the magnitude of z which is 1 plus i so let's write it down here so z which is 1 plus i magnitude of z will be square root of 1 square which is uh, the real part plus the 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 unit the, the magnitude of the imaginary part is also 1 1 square so that is square root 2 the angle tangent of theta is 1 divided by 1 and therefore theta is pi over 4 and therefore the point uh, 1 comma i can be represented as square root 2 e to the power i pi over 4 uh, in its polar form. Um, okay. Now uh, one, let's try one, one more uh, interesting case which is um, given a complex number z, so let's say it's at some point here and magnitude r and argument theta, uh, we know that it's conjugate z bar is some point here. Now again, we always, uh, by convention, we always take the counterclockwise direction for the angle to be positive. So z bar, uh, as the magnitude of z bar is the same as magnitude of z, so this vector is also of length r, but the angle that it makes is actually theta in the clockwise direction, and so this angle is actually minus theta in, in terms of our convention. So z bar can be represented, given any complex number z, z bar can be represented as r e to the power of minus i theta. Uh, given that, so convention is convention is to take uh, theta as positive in counterclockwise direction. Okay. Um, now these two uh, can be combined together uh, and co are often combined together to uh, to sort of. Uh, write an expression in terms of cosine theta and sine theta uh, and the way that works is as follows. So uh, maybe we can get rid of this. So given that z is r e to the power i theta, uh, we can now use the Euler's identity to write this as r cosine theta plus i sine theta. Likewise z bar 
can be written as r e to the power of minus i theta. And if we use Euler's identity with theta being minus of theta, then this can be written as cosine of minus theta is cosine theta, whereas sine of minus theta is minus of sine theta. So this is minus i sine theta. So if we add these two, uh, z plus z bar, if we add these two, we find that it's actually r cosine theta plus r cosine theta, whereas the imaginary parts cancels out. So it's 2r cosine theta. Or in other words, we can say that cosine theta is z plus z bar divided by 2r. Um, if we subtract these two expressions, z minus z bar, uh, then, then the real parts cancel out and we find that this, this is actually 2 times i r sine of theta. Or in other words, sine of theta is z minus z bar divided by 2 i r. Um, now, if we specifically focus on the case when r is 1, another way to write this expression is that cosine theta, so in the case that r is 1, um, then z is just e to the power i theta, and z bar is e to the power minus i theta. So cosine theta can be written as e to the power i theta plus e to the power minus i theta divided by 2. And sine of theta is uh, e to the power i theta minus e to the power minus i theta divided by 2i because we have chosen r to be 1, 2i. So this is when r is 1. And these are very useful uh, relations to remember for cosine theta and sine theta uh, in terms of the complex, uh, in terms of the uh, exponential, uh, the complex exponentially by thetas. Um, so, so yeah, I hope uh, this was of some use and uh, let's talk more about um, other, some other ideas um, uh, pertaining to both the Euler's identity and, and many more ideas in future videos. Uh, see you there, thanks.